this screencast is yet another in a series um, that looks at different tools I tried out to create demo collections of the Vassar College costume collection. Uh, and this experiment took place in spring of 2009. This screencast specifically is part two of two that look at collective access. So we'll start by logging in. Our last screencast for collective access, we were looking at the user interaction. Now we're going to look at the back end. So I'm going to log in as an administrator. And here we are. So first it takes us the same place it took us last time to a basic uh, search view. Actually, I'll do, um, we'll search for Daisy and come up, try to find our Daisy chain dress. And then we'll look a little bit at the back end of how that's organized. So here it is. When I click on it, you'll see a whole bunch more tabs open up. This is very different uh, in terms of those tabs anyway than what we saw in the uh, guest user view, public view. The, uh, this is, so you see right here, this is the summary view which is pretty much the same, we'll scroll down and make sure, uh, pretty much the same as our public view. One of the small differences is you'll see under each section is a little, um, little text that if I click on it will allow me to edit. Um, but rather than doing those, I'm actually going to go through in order following these tabs. So we're going to come over to the left. The leftmost tab is the cataloging tab. We'll click on that. And so here you'll see um, this is where I entered all the basic info. Now, for my experiment with collective access, um, I, you know, since I was working with such a small collection, it was pretty easy for me um, just to cut and paste data into it manually. Um, it is, I understand it's pretty easy to do an import. Um, I just didn't have the technical skill myself to do that and didn't want to have to ask anybody for help. Um, that was part of this project uh, to be able to see what I could do with the, um, with each um, piece of software uh, kind of out of the box <clears throat> without a lot of tech assistance what I could do. So if I had had a little tiny bit more help I could have done an import pretty easily though. Um, but instead what I did was to uh, export my data from my FileMaker database into an Excel spreadsheet um, and then simply cut and paste each field as I needed it. Um, the first group of fields you'll see here are ones that are kind of this, you know, standard out of the box um, fields for collective access. So we'll scroll down. And you'll see the historical notes field that I used as a kind of exhibition notes field. Okay. So that's all the kind of basic stuff. Okay. And you may or may not have noticed when we opened up the cataloging tag, we got a whole other set of uh, tabs. Now, the numbering um, features I didn't really take advantage of too fully. Um, a lot of these features I either didn't didn't use just because they weren't really relevant to my collection or I didn't really understand what they did in my limited time working with this experiment. So I'm just going to show you a few of the basic ones that I did figure out just kind of playing around with it. Um, the custodial tab, I didn't use that either, but you'll see if you really were using this as a full collection management tool, this could be a really, um, really useful field. You know, basically, I'm still using my FileMaker database as my back end. I'm looking for something to, as more of a uh, presentation, you know, web-based presentation tool. Um, so a lot of the features that Collective Access offers aren't something that I'm really interested in. But if someone was looking for a really fuller collection management tool, there are a lot of features here. 
a tab that I did use, though, is the Attributes tab. And um, a little bit later, I'll show you how I created my own set of additional attributes. This is basically a way that you can add more fields to specifically describe your objects. You know, if there aren't fields in the basic set that, that cover your object, then you can create more. So this is the set that I created, working off of a pretty basic um, Dublin Core standard um, with a few added elements. Uh, if we go to the next tab, that's representations. And here at the top, it's showing me, uh, giving me options to add a new representation. But if I scroll down, it'll show me all the different representations, the different images that I already have in there. And you'll see there's the one at the top is considered the primary media. That's the first one that'll come up and the one that'll come up in the um, thumbnail views of the search. But I can move these images up or down to put them in a specific order and make sure that the one that I want to be the primary media is up at the top. I also can download them back if, if I uploaded them from somewhere else and don't have um, a copy, I can download it again. Okay. Clips, synonyms, history, didn't really take much advantage of those. Docs, I did a little bit. Um, the way I have most of this set up is any documentation I have as an image that actually shows up under the representations, but another option would be to kind of separate it out. So um, you may remember I had a, uh, an image of the letter from the donor of this dress. I also have that here as a document under this docs page. Now storage also could be really useful if I were using this as more of a collection management tool. Um, but I didn't take advantage of that. So that gives you a very quick overview of the cataloging features. Again, you know, a lot of them that I didn't even try out, um, but the ones I, I did worked really well.